I'm really excited to be here and carry on a long-standing Odd Salon tradition. Uh, tonight, it's my turn to dishonor somebody important by mispronouncing their name in French. <laughs> Toussaint L'Overture, I'm sorry, <laughs> rose from nothing. We don't know who his parents were. We know only vaguely when he may have been born. His beginning mirror is that of millions of enslaved black people in the Caribbean. But he would rise to incredible heights. The story of Toussaint Louverture is the story of a truly fearless man who seized every opportunity and led his people into the most successful rebellion in human history. This is the island of Hispaniola in the Caribbean as it appeared throughout the 18th century. Maps, it's true. <laughs> Divided roughly through the middle, much as it is today, we have two colonies. To the east, Santo Domingo, known today as the Dominican Republic. The Spanish colony of Santo Domingo, poor and mostly uninhabited, stood as stark contrast to its western neighbor, San Domingue, which is literally the same name, except in French, because they hadn't invented creativity yet. <laughs> At the time of Toussaint's birth, San Domingue was already the richest, most active, most powerful colony in the West Indies. As a kid in the Caribbean, Toussaint wished for a war. He knew that he was poor. He knew it was the only way to rise up. Born into slavery around 1743, Toussaint was no stranger to conflict. Despite seeing San Domingue clash around him, he kept his head down. He climbed the ranks within his plantation, he was eventually freed, and he continued working on his former master's land for decades afterwards, into his 50s. In 1791, as revolution swept France, multiple slave revolts broke out near his plantation. He led both his family and his former masters to safety in Spanish Santo Domingo. This was not a unique moment in his career. He cared for the powerful just as much as he cared for the disenfranchised. So after escorting those he cared about out of the colony, Toussaint became a doctor in the camp of rebel leader Georges Biassou. Toussaint saw something in this guy, and he saw something in Toussaint, quickly promoting him from lead doctor to aide de camp and top lieutenant. When the revolution escalated in France and King Louis' head came off, Biasu had little faith that the French Republic would follow through with his calls for equality and manumission. He abandoned the parent country entirely and swore allegiance to the Spanish. His soldiers, however, were not ready to do the same, and neither was Toussaint. Biasu took a few loyal soldiers into Santo Domingo and faded into obscurity. Toussaint took over the entire camp and became the leader of the Black Rebellion in Santo Domingo. It's at this point in the story where we run into this guy, Leger Felicité Santhanax, who was sent by France to restore power. If you've ever had that one friend who made the entire group look better just by being an insufferable fucking pushover, uh, you're already familiar with Leger Felicité. You can like take a break for 30 seconds, go watch some Rick and Morty, make a booty call, I don't really care. <laughs> when Santhanax arrived in saint he found people divided by skin color, rioting, killing each other, generally being very scary. He immediately made a proclamation granting certain freedoms, not like freedom, freedom, but certain freedoms to slaves there. That actually made the slaves super angry because it wasn't even half of what they wanted at that point. Quite shortly later, Toussaint Louverture made one of the most impressive speeches of his career, and I quote, brothers and friends, I am Toussaint Louverture. Perhaps my name has made itself known to you. I have undertaken vengeance. I want liberty and equality to reign in Saint-Domingue. I am working to make that happen. Unite yourselves to us, brothers, and fight with us for the same cause. To which I can only imagine Leger Felicité replied, oh God, oh fuck, please don't hurt me. And that same day, overstepped his position to unilaterally abolish all slavery in Saint-Domingue. In a failed bid to please Toussaint, who he was fucking terrified of, Leger Felicité expelled about 60% of Saint-Domingue's white population, a massive barrier to Toussaint taking power. Naturally, France called him back and subjected him to an inquiry generally consisting of questions like, uh, excuse moi, you were supposed to consolidate our power. Why'd you free all the slaves? Why'd you expel the colonists? Why'd you let an old freedman take control of thousands of people to potentially fight us? Now, Leger Felicité's answers may have been lost to time. Personally, I like to imagine him on the stage crying and pissing his sand culotte. <laughs> he somehow, though, did convince the French government to send him back to Saint-Domingue. He spent about three years there getting absolutely fucking nothing done, and Toussaint was about fed up with him in 1797. He said, please return to France. 
Leger Felicite hesitated, at which point Toussaint politely placed him under armed guard on a ship back to France, where he too would fade into obscurity. <laughs> now, these last couple minutes that you've been watching Rick and Morty and making booty calls and I've been talking about Santhanax, uh, a lot has been going on with Toussaint. Though he disagreed with the exile of plantation owners, he used it to his advantage. He pitched himself as France's last remaining friend on the island against the encroaching Spanish and British threat. The French bought this wholesale, and Toussaint was named lieutenant governor of the entire island. He was no longer leading a rebellion, but the entire populace of Saint-Domingue. Shortly after coming into this power, Toussaint started to have concerns about France. The revolution there had begun to settle, and he'd heard rumors that the interim government was considering a reversal on their abolitionist stance. And he would have been foolish to trust the French. Instead, Toussaint made a secret deal with the British. The British removed the last of their troops and supplied his army with weapons in exchange for a cut of the sugar from Saint-Domingue's plantations. A year later, in 1798, he'd signed a near-identical trade contract with the American government of John Adams. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, both the British and the Americans wanted Toussaint to declare independence, likely for little reason other than to fuck over the French, which was kind of a running joke with those countries at that point. Still, Toussaint resisted. He said he was a loyal Frenchman despite these secret contracts. Now, back in France, Napoleon gained power and he wrote a new constitution. Many of Toussaint's people were terrified this new constitution would mean the end of abolition, but Napoleon did try to assuage them of that concern. Napoleon also wrote to Toussaint, saying that he could remain lieutenant governor of the islands, that abolition could stand. He had just one, one request. Please stay out of Spanish Santo Domingo. I want to repair my relationship with the Spanish. Here's how Toussaint responded. He invaded Santo Domingo. <laughs> he declared freedom for all slaves there. He brought it under French rule by force, and he installed himself as the ruler of all fucking Hispaniola. So, needless to say, Toussaint and Napoleon's relationship was not off to the best start. Shortly thereafter, Toussaint unveiled a new constitution abolishing slavery and establishing racial equality in Hispaniola, declaring himself governor general for life, and most interestingly, reiterating his French loyalty, totally declining to declare independence when he had every opportunity to do so. Napoleon, though, didn't really give a shit at this point how loyal Toussaint said he was. He sent 20,000 troops to Saint-Domingue with a three-stage plan. Step one, enter diplomatically. Convince the residents of France's intentions to simply garrison the island. Step two, ha ha, we lied! Wage war against Toussaint and his generals. Make sure that the black and mixed-race population were leaderless. Step three, reinstate slavery. Knowing that the full might of France was coming at his people, intending to subjugate them, Toussaint and his generals sprung into action. Toussaint himself took his own detachment and retreated into the mountains, waiting for yellow fever to decimate the French troops. The plan worked, and natural disease shook the French severely, but not until Toussaint's own army that he'd built over a decade was scattered and illusioned, disillusioned after months of fighting. Both sides felt that they were losing, and Toussaint held a meeting with the invading French general Leclerc. Toussaint agreed to lay down his arms and retire. Leclerc agreed that Saint-Domingue would remain free from slavery forever. This was a bittersweet compromise, but it was the culmination of Toussaint Louverture's career. Having come from nothing, having been born into slavery, having united an island and a people beneath his own banner, it is Toussaint Louverture personally we have to thank for the freedom of an entire nation. Toussaint did retire and, unsurprisingly, was betrayed by the goddamn French. <laughs> he was arrested, and while boarding the ship that was to ferry him from Saint-Domingue forever, he said, In overthrowing me, you have cut down in Saint-Domingue only the trunk of the Tree of Liberty. It will spring up again from the roots, for they are numerous and they are deep. He was, of course, right. His two top generals, Jean-Jacques Dessalines and Henri Christophe, would carry on his fight, declare independence from France, and become the first emperor and first king, respectively, of Haiti. 
Toussaint Louverture inspired them and has continued inspiring people for centuries since. And with that, I would raise my glass. Not to freedom, though a worthy goal. Not to equality, though something he strived for. Not to coming from nothing, though he did. And not to putting other leaders to shame, though he certainly did that as well. Tonight, I would raise my glass to one thing and one thing only, making Leger Felicité Santanax cry.